Sorry, like, I, there's no way to, to filter that. Her coochie stains, like, no. I'm not gonna do it. Her eyes were so buggy. Her mouth was moving, but she wasn't talking. She was just like. <laughs> Y'all, when I tell you, Renee ran up on me and did one of these to me and put me up against the bathroom stall, y'all. Hey beauties, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. And if you're not new here, hey girl, hey, how you doing? How you been? Where you from? Where you at? By the title of this video, y'all already know what this is gonna be about. So if y'all seen the video before this where I reacted to the She Went Missing, you're here for the part two of what went on with me and Renee at the Tasha was going. So boom, let's get straight into it. I haven't quit my job because we had to go search for Tasha, a whole bunch of stuff. So me and Renee ha ain't have no jobs, okay? We had no jobs at this point. I just got the new crib. So like I told y'all, Renee's mother, she took the kids with her to New York to drop them off to my aunt house on vacation. And Renee's mom also took her daughter so Renee could get her stuff together, get her apartment and all this other stuff, right? I'm not gonna lie, like we would find activities to do so we can get out of the house because between me and Renee, we both were scared as hell to stay in that house, y'all, because I can't believe that lady was under the house. I can't believe she was just standing there the way she was standing there. So I was like, yeah, we need to find some stuff to do. We need to get up out this house because I'm not finna just sit in this house. And it's obviously a spirit in here. It's a man telling people to do some things. And yeah, I don't want to do those things. So if y'all remember the psycho story time where I told y'all we had started going to clubs. That's when we met the psycho dude. If y'all ain't watched that story time, y'all can go watch that after this though period okay he had put us on to some clubs so we eventually started going to clubs and stuff renee was really not trying to get herself together for her kid for herself or whatever only thing renee thought about was partying and you know me i'm fresh out of new york i only been in south carolina about three months so you know i'm still the same toxic crazy turn up person i was so i didn't even mind that we was going to clubs when you had no jobs and when you had no money you're a dummy bitch because at this point it was like okay i still had me a little sugar daddy from new york who was always sending me money down here to south carolina so i would get about a little 300 a week little allowance it wasn't a lot but you know i was getting a little something something so we started going to the clubs like i said but her other plan was she wanted to be a stripper what was the reason? At this time, I showed y'all the pictures of me in the Baby Daddy series where I got real skinny. So, of course, the body was right. The body was tight. But did I want to shake it all around in the pole? I did not. So, we had went to this ball one time. We had met these two girls. And they were basically telling us how they dances. Listen, I am not going to cap. These girls was not money material. Like, if I was in a strip club, I'd probably throw some quarters at them. But for dollars and shit, they was not that. It was not giving ass. So I'm like, they let y'all be strippers? So the girl like, yeah, what you mean? We make like 500 a night. I'm in my head like 500. That's it. Like, so Renee was like, oh, well, we're going to go be strippers. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, no, the fuck I'm not. So Renee, she was a fit girl. I inserted a picture if I still got it. She was a fit girl, but you could tell she used to be on the bigger side back in the day. And she lost a lot of weight, so she had a lot of loose skin, bruh. So she used to take, bruh, she used to take her daughter's shirts and she used to put them on as belly shirts and then tuck in the loose skin from her stomach into her pants. Bitch, I'm a mother! She eventually got rid of that plan because I was not teaming up with her. As the days going by, we starting to meet new people out here. Renee, all of a sudden, she's on the chat line now. She on Tinder. She just meeting people from POF, all these types of places, y'all. And I'm telling her, don't tell nobody where I live. Don't bring nobody to my crib because I'm not a witness of that shit. So let's back up real quick. So before Tasha had left, this was the last day that Tasha and Renee worked before they quit. So I was at work. We all worked at the same job. Renee came up to me and she asked me because she could get my car key because she was feeling sick and she wanted to go to the house. Stop the cap. This was around like 8 o'clock. We had a lunch break at 12 midnight that day. So I was like, okay, well, I don't have my car, so I can't go to the store. So let me go out to the stump over there, you know, smoke a little cigarette. That's when I was smoking cigarettes. 
So I was like, let me go to the stump, smoke a little cigarette, get it over with, y'all. I go to leave out the building on my lunch break, and Renee and Tasha is standing right there talking to some dude with a big truck. So I'm looking at Renee, and I'm like, bro, you left hours ago. You said that you was feeling sick. Why are you still in the parking lot talking to a nigga? So Renee is like, she's laughing a little bit, trying to act cute. She like, girl, don't even try to embarrass me, this and the third. But yeah, like, this dude, I want to hang out with him or whatever. He want to hang out with me. I said, where did you meet him? She was like, oh, I just met him here at the job. So you didn't know him 24 hours yet? You don't even know his name? You don't really know nothing about this nigga? You just want to hang out with him? So where you hanging out with him at? Because y'all not coming to my crib. She was like, oh, well, I was going to bring him back to the house. I said, no, the fuck you not. Bitch, are you dumb? Pardon me? So at this point, y'all, I forgot all about the job. I never even went and clocked back in and went to work. I snatched my car keys from Renee and I got in the car. So as I'm trying to pull off, my passenger door opened. So I'm like, who the hell is this? I look over and it's Tasha. Mind you, this before she was under the house, y'all. So it's Tasha. So I'm like, Tasha, what you doing in my car? Like, why are you not over there with Renee? So she like, oh, Renee told me to ride with you because she gonna go with him. So I'm like, all right, I don't care where she go, but all I know is she not bringing no niggas to my crib. I just moved here. I don't trust these niggas. Like, nah. And then on top of that, niggas ain't even got no furniture. Niggas got blow beds and food. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm driving home, y'all. As soon as I pull out the parking lot, I see the truck pull out the parking lot. Mind you, Renee is a passenger in his truck. So I'm just driving to the house. Mind you, y'all, I'm speeding. It's 12 midnight. I am speeding, bro. I'm going so fast because I do not want this man to know where I live. Like, you, he not coming to my house. I don't know how many times I told Renee that she, this bitch don't listen. He not coming to my house. You want to be a hoe, go be a hoe in his house. He not coming to my house. I know that's right. <laughs> I'm speeding. I've noticed the truck. The truck is gating up on me. It's like the truck is following me. Mind you, it's midnight. We like the literally only two cars going down this road at this point, y'all. I don't know if anybody was asleep at work, whatever. You know people in South Carolina go to sleep. So this truck getting up on me, so I'm like, fuck that. So I push the gas mad fast. I'm speeding, speeding, feel me? <laughs> so Renee calls Tasha's phone. She's like, oh, why can't we been driving like that? Why she trying to run? Tasha like, cause she don't want that nigga in, in her house. Like she keeps telling you this, but it's like y'all following her, y'all not listening. So when they like, oh well, I have a room there, so if I want to come there and bring him, I can do that. <laughs> yeah, hello, nine one one. So I snatched the phone. I thought going in. I said, first of all, listen, little bitch, you don't have no motherfucking room. That's my kid's room. Hold you in here that shit for three months until they come to fuck back. You gotta go, bitch. Da, 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 da. I'm going in like, bitch, if you want a nigga in the crib, get your own crib, bro. This is not your crib. Your name is not on the lease. The same way I let you in, bitch, I could kick you the fuck out. And honestly, y'all, I was really not trying to kick them out because my grandmother always told me, like, that's bad karma. Anytime I ever put somebody in my house, I had bad karma. So I always would just let them leave on their own. But, bitch, you got to go if you think this creepy old man coming in my crib because he not. She just like, oh, well, what you acting like that for? Why you acting like that? I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I hung up the phone and now I'm speeding y'all. So I'm going so fast, bro. I'm going so fast. So Tasha, she's over there scared as hell. She's like, charisma, slow down, slow down. So I'm like, no, I'm not slowing down until the truck stop following me, bro. I'm not slowing down until the truck stop following me. So we get to like McDonald's. Y'all don't know where that's at, but it's like another two miles and then my house is at the McDonald's. So we get to like McDonald's. Mind you, it's a red light. Why do I speed past the red light and I keep going? So I noticed when I look back in my rearview mirror that the truck was turning the other way. So I said, yeah, maybe he got it that he not going to my crib. Yeah, because they not coming in my crib. That's that. That's it. That's all. So that happened or whatever. We get to the crib or whatever. The next day, Renee asks me, oh, could I come pick her up from the nigga house? And I clearly tell her, no, the fuck I cannot. Mind you, it's three girls. We all living in the same crib. In my crib. And I'm the only one with a car. Bitch, no. Find your way. So I guess he paid for her Uber or whatever. She came in with an attitude, talking all of this shit. Oh, you want to act funny and you want to do this? Bitch, I hardly even fucking know you, bro. I know your mother. Your mother left you here stranded. I know nothing about you, girl. I don't really know y'all bitches like that. And I still let y'all in my house, like... 
I'm sleeping with one eye open because I don't know y'all bitches. And you getting mad about me because I want you getting mad at me because I want to let you bring a makeup to the crib? Bitch, wow. So she eventually got over that. Boom. Let's get back into the club situation. So we at the club one night, right? Woo, woo, get money. Woo, woo, get money. Mind you, we looking good. Feel me? We meeting new people. We thinking we the shit. Us broke bitches, we thinking we is the shit, feel me? Mind you, all the niggas is loving on us because they like, oh, y'all accents, y'all from up north, we loving that, which I want to drink. Niggas buying us drinks, niggas buying us all type of shit, right? We meet three dudes there. That's the three friends that I told y'all about in a psycho story time. So we met three dudes there. The one I was talking to, I'm going to just name him B. I'm with B, basically. She's talking to another dude. We just going to call him Dress because he had long dress. And Dress just kept staring at me, y'all. But I wasn't saying nothing. So Renee Camp comes up to me and she's asking me basically why I keep staring at her nigga. First of all, baby, we just met these niggas not even 20 minutes ago. I'm not staring at him. He's staring at me. Like, what are you talking about? I don't want that nigga. Like, he not even my type, bro. Like, I don't want him. So she's like, oh, well, I see you. Still. I'm not staring at nothing, bitch. Shut the fuck up. So, long story short, about two weeks past, me and me, her, and the dudes, we get cool, whatever. The dudes, they was very truthful. They let us know, like, listen, we got big mothers. This is not what we on. We not on this. We want to hang out. We want to do this. We could smoke. We could have a smoke session. We could do this. We could do that. Boom, boom, bam. So after like two weeks passed, we had wandered up. They had picked us up. We had wandered up going to their crib. Not they crib, but we went to their crib, but we didn't go inside their crib. Like we were just having a little smoke session outside in the car because I told them I don't want to go in the crib, bro, because I don't really know y'all like that. I'm still in the getting to know y'all phase. You know what I'm saying? Only thing I know about y'all is y'all got baby mothers, y'all got kids. I know y'all name. I know y'all age. I know y'all birthdays. Um, that's it. I don't know if you killed 10 niggas yesterday, if you molested a dog. I don't know you like that. So, I'm still trying to, you know, still trying to get to know. So, after that happened, like, like I said, we got cool days happened after that, and we had invited the dudes over. Now, I know y'all thinking, like, girl, so why wasn't it okay for Renee to bring her dude over there that she just met? But it's okay for y'all to bring y'all dudes over there that y'all that y'all just met what three weeks ago. Like how charisma? And the explanation to that is because bitch, this is my motherfucking house. So if I say a nigga can come over, they can come over. But she didn't even give me time enough to even meet this new nigga that she just got from our job. We didn't know nothing about this nigga. She still don't know his name to this day. I asked her what the nigga name was, and she was she said she forgot. He never told you, bitch. They would just say it was a one night nice stand. So we didn't like the news or whatever. At this time, like I said, still no furniture. It just food in the crib. So we already explained that to them. Like we just moved here a couple weeks ago. Da da da. So they be understanding. They like, no, we understand. Like we know how it is when people move. It's probably some blow up beds. Like it is what it is. No, we not gonna judge you. Feel me? Like we some getting money ass niggas. We ain't finna judge you or nothing like that. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So they come in, they real cool. We smoking, drinking, and stuff like that. At the time, I had stopped smoking. So I'm drinking, you know, stuff like that. Everything is Gucci. Basically, I go in the room with my little dude, and Renee go in the room with her little dude, feel me? So we get to know each other more a little deep, you know what I'm saying? A little deep, uh, personal, you know? Let me have this one night nice stand real quick. So in my head, I want to have this little one night stand. I didn't know one night stands consist of a nigga putting his mouth all over your body and making it feel good. I thought it was just like boom, boom, and then go. But this nigga was on some in love shit. And I was trying to explain to him, baby, I'm not trying to do none of that. You were just a one night stand. You cool to kick it with, cool to chill with. Me and you, we could remain friends, but we would never be a couple. We would never be none of that. So if that's what you hoping for, I don't want us to be that. So he basically agreed. He was like, yeah, you know, I guess so. If we don't get messy, we can still be friends, whatever. Yeah, we can be friends with benefits. Only when I want the benefits, though, so, okay? But after that, it's, it's, it's over with. So Renee, she go in the room with dress or whatever. Mind you, y'all, all I hear is this bitch moaning mad loud, y'all. Mad loud. And I'm just like, hello, can you shut up? Can you shut up? Mind you, I said my little shit was quick because I'm just trying to do one night stand. It's been a couple months, you know, you know. And um, yeah, this bitch in here moaning mad fucking loud. It's like she wanted us to hear her song. 
Moans was sexy and all that. I'm just like, okay, okay. Okay, we get the point, we get the point. But when I tell you this morning shit went on for like four hours, bro, we done got up, he done smoked him some weed, we done went and got us something to eat, we done came back still moaning, all types of shit. So now it's the wee hours in the morning, we all get up or whatever, so now we all head back in the kitchen. So now they doing their little smoke session. I'm sipping, you know, I'm cooking food, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, after, you know, getting out workout and you get hungry or whatever. So I'm cooking the food and all types of shit. And I go to open the back door. So I go to open the back door. I noticed the one that Renee talking to, he grabbed his little totally and he like, what the fuck you doing? So I'm like, what you mean what I'm doing? I'm opening my back door, like letting some air in here. What are you talking about? He like, do you know what time it is? Yeah, nigga, it's three in the morning. They say it right there on the stove, but who the fuck cares? Move, this is my crib, let me open the door. He like, nah, I'm not with all that shit. This is the South, y'all new to the South. Let me put y'all up on game. Niggas will back door you, niggas will run through your backyard. It's mad pitch black over here where you live. People will run in your crib and do this, that, and the third. So I was like, oh, for real? Well, I don't live in the hood. I live in a, uh, in a nice retirement area. Everybody over here is white and old. And they want canes. And I'm the only black bitch right here in the middle. So nobody's finna do nothing. He like, no, you don't know how South Carolina is. You better close that door. I'm not with none of that. And then on top of that, we don't even know y'all like that. Y'all don't really know us like that. We'll be knowing each other for like three weeks to a month. That's not long enough, like... I done been set up for less. So I was like, okay, whatever. I just put in my head that this dude is crazy. So I closed the door. After that situation, feel me, Renee was trying to find ways to get money. Like I said, my little sugar daddy thing was sending me money every week. So, but I never told Renee. So Renee never knew I was having money, feel me? I was just keeping it to myself because I know that she always was begging and she always wanted niggas to do shit for her. But yet, she don't want to get a job. She don't want to fill out this application. She don't want to do none of that shit. So now, at this point, we finna go to the club. We finna go to the club. This is another day. Now, we at this club. Mind you, Renee, she trying to figure out how to get money. She trying to use niggas for money. She trying to do whatever she can. And I'm just sitting here chilling like... I really did not want to go to the club that day, but I really did not want to stay in that spooky ass house. So I was like, okay, cool. So we go to the club, mind you, we stand there, whatever. And I'm sitting at the bar. I order me a drink or whatever. And they order us her a drink. You know, she got a little couple dollars, but she ain't got a lot. So we order each other, we order our drink or whatever. We sip our drink. That was it. Like, I was so annoyed with Renee that I was just like, I'm not even drunk. So I'm sitting there and some girl comes up to me, y'all. We gonna name her we gonna name her Valentine, right? So Valentine, she comes up to me. I say she's about five four. She a little on the heavy side. And she's a she, you know, she a pretty girl. She got long hair, she black. She um she was dressed casual, you know. We had heels on, we had heels, pants, and like a sheer shirt, like a see-through shirt type shit. And the girl she had on, you know, casual stuff like that. So at this particular night, it was karaoke night at this bar that we had went to. So the girl comes up to us, Valentine, and she's like, Oh my God, girl, you're not drunk enough. You need to get drunk. You're so pretty. You just stand a third. So she just talking to me. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, you know, I'm here with my friend too. She's like, oh my God. Okay, so I'm going to get y'all drunk because y'all not good enough for me. Y'all yeah, was college kids. You know, college kids is turned the fuck up. So the girl, she just started ordering mad shots. So then her and her friends, while we was drinking, she was like, shot, 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 shot. We standing on the bar now. We doing that. Mm, 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 mm. You know, we doing the. We, we, we college kids without the college, y'all. We as college kids without the college. I took over my heels like you on that bar. You know, I started twerking. Feel me? I'm twerking to Justin Bieber and shit. Bruh. Hey, hey, we getting lit, right? Having a good time. Oh, I remember that night like yesterday. So now, like I said, it's karaoke night. So we get on the mic, film. We start singing some Keisha Cole. Her song had came on. And one thing about Renee, that bitch can sing, y'all. She can sing. Feel me? Like, I'm talking about Mariah Carey, Beyonce. All of them people, all of them high notes they do and they, they voice don't crack. She can do that shit, bro. So she was on there, 
and I was just like, sing it, girl. Yeah, sing it. Mind you, the girl Valentine, she was still giving us mad drinks. Basically, the night was about to be over, so Valentine was telling us, she's like, no, we gonna go to this after hour spot, I'm gonna after hour spot, y'all can meet us there, I'm gonna text you the address or whatever, and we gonna get lit, like, we gonna have a good time, we gonna eat some food, I'm gonna buy y'all some food and all this stuff. So I'm looking at this girl, and I'm like, if you a college kid or around college kids, how you got all of this money? Like, you know what I'm saying? So that part will come up later. So like I said, we went to the after hour spot. We were still lit. Hey, hey, we lit, we lit, we lit. So that happened or whatever. It was the end of that, right? Some days had passed. The next weekend was coming up and basically Valentine had sex my phone. That's another thing, y'all. Valentine liked me, y'all. She genuinely liked me, wanted to be with me, wanted to fuck on me. And I was just like, baby girl, like you not my type. I don't care how much money you spending. I don't care about none of that shit. And Renee knew she liked me, y'all. So Renee would try to get me to do things with Valentine just to get money from her. And I was like, I'm not doing it. I don't even know where she getting this money from that she got. Like, it just was real weird. She had invited us to her house, right? She had invited us because her mother was doing like some, um, what's some people, the Mary Kay? Is it Mary Kay? When they walk around with the books and stuff and they try to sell you like the nice face washes and all the expensive good shit, skincare shit, whatever. So her mother was having one of those at the house and she had invited us over there. So we had put it, her address in the GPS. Mind you, she texted me the whole time. Her and Renee do not have each other numbers at all, at all. We head over on to um, Valentine's house. So when we get to Valentine's house, we start slowing down because we looking at the houses and we like, bro, this is a rich neighborhood. They, I would never forget, they lived on Wellington Drive. Anything named Wellington is rich. I don't give a fuck. That is some rich shit. So I, we get to her house and we like, is we sure this is the right address? So I'm, I'm clicking the thing. I'm like, nah, this this can't be. This house is too big. This is some rich people shit. Cameras everywhere. About five car garage. They got a pond in they shit pools. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. This can't be their house. This the wrong house. So I'm like, eh. So out of nowhere, we just see Valentine just come out the house and she just like, hey, girl. Like, that's the thing about um, Valentine. Her energy was always high as fuck. And I'm going to tell y'all why. But her energy was always high. She always had great energy. She was a good person to hang out with, get to know. She was a good person genuinely. Feel me? So, we go to the Mary Kay thing. We walk in the house. And, y'all, the house was housing feel me like her parents was black you could tell they was very successful or they even won a lottery i don't know what the fuck i don't know i didn't ask that all i knew or i'm not even gonna say all i knew all valentine told us was that her parents was very successful and they were very rich and so was she so i was just like so I looked at Renee, Renee mouth drops wide the fuck open. Mind you, Renee used to kind of be mean to Valentine. She used to be rolling her eyes. She used to tell me how she couldn't stand her, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, why you don't like her? Just because she came up to me in the bar first and she didn't even acknowledge you. Like, why are you doing this though, right? Why Renee whole attitude changed? And I tell you, Renee was on this girl dick. Like the whole time we was at this girl house, Renee would not leave this girl's side. The girl got up, Renee get up. So now we go to the girl room or whatever, right? So now we in her room, we looking around, we like, oh, okay, this is some nice shit. So she had her room there and she also had her own crib. She also had her own apartment where she did not live with her parents or whatever. But if she always wanted to come back home, she had a room there. So we went in her room, her room connected to like some other room and some all types of shit. So at this point, Valentine, she leaves the room or whatever. Renee is telling me like, Oh girl, I think you should fuck with her. They rich, like, maybe you need to get this money. I think you should fuck with her. Like, and I'm like, bro, I'm not fucking with her. I'm not fucking with her. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I refuse. I refuse to do it. We was all twerking in that ball the other day together. Valentine pussy stank. I know you fucking lying, bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, I, there's no way to, to feel to that. Her coochie stank. Like, Say no. What? I'm not going to do it. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to do it. I don't look at her in that way. I look at her as a a person that we're building a friendship. I don't give a fuck if she rich, if she poor. 
I never cared about that. You caring about all of this shit. This girl looking around for shit to steal and all types of shit. And I'm looking at Renee like, bro, don't, don't do that. Don't even do that. So, that happens or whatever. Mind you, this is all a Friday night. So, after that, mind you, we finna go to the club. We had already had our club attire in the bag or whatever. We had already been over there two hours doing the Mary Kay thing. And then we went to her room. And then we switched up our clothes or whatever. Freshened up in the bathroom. And now, I'm driving my car. Renee is with me. And the girl, she's driving her car. By the car she had, you could tell she was a rich girl. But I didn't I didn't know making models a car. So, I was just like, oh, that's a cute little car or whatever. That's cute. But, yeah, they, they definitely had money. Feel me? She takes us to this new club. And everything is just copacetic, feel me? So, at the corner of my eye, I go to look over. Remember the boy I told you I was talking to named B? I go to look over, and B is staring at me. But B got his my, his hand like this when he turns around. So, I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? So, Renee comes up to me. She's like, yo, you don't see that nigga B? He over there with his baby mother. Uh, 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 he's standing third. You ain't gonna say nothing. So, I'm like, say something for what I already told him. It was a friend zone thing. If I want the benefits, I get the benefits with with a condo. You know what I'm saying? But if I want the benefits, we get the benefits. It's nothing that serious. I'm not about to go over there and come to this bitch as a woman. I have nothing to do with their situation, right? So she just like, oh well, if it was me. I would have said something. I'm just saying third. And I'm like, bro, I'm not gonna say none of that. Like, I don't care about none of that. So the whole time he oh, he in a club with his big mother, he looking at me. So we sitting down or whatever, like I said, the rich girl, she buying all the drinks, all the food, all everything. So now at this time, the girl, Valentine, she says she has to go to the bathroom. And out of nowhere, I just see Renee jump up and she like, oh, well, I gotta go to the bathroom too. They go to the bathroom or whatever and 15 minutes had passed. And I was like, where's these bitches at? Like, they taking mad long. I don't already drunk a whole Corona. Cause feel me, I wasn't taking shots by myself, only when they was there. So I had already drunk a Corona. And I'm like, what the fuck is taking these girls so long? Like, I'm not understanding it. Y'all, I go to go in the bathroom, right? I push open the fucking bathroom door. And these bitches are standing over the sink with a dollar bill with some lines. And they just sniffing on up. Oh, hell no. Sniffing on up, y'all. I don't think I ever told y'all this in any of my stories, but I'm going to tell y'all this now. I don't do no other drug than weed. Yes, I have tried a Molly before. Yes, I have tried the E-Pill before. No, I was never consistent with them shits. It was a one and done. I never go back to that. No, I have never did coke before. No, I have never did anything besides weed. Okay? And I don't fuck with people who do anything besides weed. Because they have a thing where they want to try to peer pressure you into doing some shit. And I'm not with that shit. I'm not with that shit. So I always told myself, listen... I'm not finna do that shit. If y'all don't know, now y'all know that. My mother, she has a drug habit, feel me? And I watch her grow up on this shit, and I just wasn't with the shit. I seen how it made her change, how it made her act, how, you feel me? So, I would just, I wasn't with that shit, y'all. So, when I seen that shit, that's how my face was. I couldn't do shit else, bro. I literally was about to cry, y'all. I seriously was about to cry because I could not believe what the fuck I was seeing, bro. They finally turned back at the sniffing, bro. They had like five white lines. They didn't sniff all of these shits, bro. They was arguing over the last line. It was that serious. It's five lines and it's two of them. So two, one to two, one to two, and it was one left. And they arguing over it. So they decided to just split the line. So I was fucking disgusted, y'all. I have never seen Renee do any other drug. Like, I'm not trying to judge people like that, but to each his own. I just don't choose to hang out with people like that. I just don't know. So they finally turn around. They see me there. And Valentine, she like, oh, hey, girl, you good? You want some? You want some? Who trying to take this bullshit and stress off my motherfucking hands? And I'm like, bitch, what the fuck do you mean? What the fuck do you mean? So Renee's like, oh, oh stop talking to her like that. What are you talking to her like that for? I'm like, Renee. First of all, I'm finna call your mother and tell her what the fuck you doing, bro. I know you grown, but do your mother know you do this shit? Y'all, when I tell you, Renee ran up on me 
and did one of these to me. Say what? And put me up against the bathroom stall, y'all. This is why I don't fuck with people who do that coke shit. This bitch was so strong, y'all. I was trying to get this bitch off of me. Her eyes were so buggy. Her mouth was moving, but she wasn't talking. She was just like. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, yo, she was scaring me, y'all. So I was just hemmed up against the wall. Mind you, Valentine's telling her, like, get off of her. What are you doing? Like, what are you doing? I guess Valentine was used to taking drugs. I don't know. So I'm just up against the wall and I'm like, Renee, get the fuck off of me, bitch. When you get off of me, I'm going to beat the shit out of you, bitch. Get the fuck off me. I'm telling your mother. Renee is holding me, y'all. She's like, please don't tell my mother. Whatever you do, please don't tell my mother. Grip just gets tighter and tighter, bro. I'm like, okay, okay. Like, after three more seconds, bro, I damn near was about to die. I said, okay, bro, you're literally choking me with my shirt. I'm not going to say nothing, bro. I'm not going to say anything. But really, yes, the fuck I was. I was going to wait, but I still was going to do it. I was going to wait till she was sober. Just in case when she tried to fight me, she got the regular strength. I can't fight you with that Hulk strength, bitch. I don't know why you got that strong, but I ain't like that shit, y'all. And she was very bossy on that shit. She was very paranoid, all types of shit. So, at this point, I'm just like, I can't fuck with this girl no more. This is what I'm saying in my head. I'm keeping everything in my head because, uh-uh. I'm like, I cannot fuck with this girl. So now at this point, I'm she let me go or whatever. She calmed down. She asked her and Valentine, oh, put another line out. Let me get another line. Because she just glued my shit. So I'm asking her and I said, when the fuck did you start sniffing? Like, when did you start doing this, bro? So she like, oh, I always did it in New York from time to time. But I'm not going to use it like that. Stop the cap. I, I stopped doing it when I came out here. But, you know, we met Valentine. And Valentine said she did. So I just happened to do it with her. But please just don't tell my mom. My mom, she not gonna give me my daughter, this, that, third. I'm like, do your mom know you do it? She like, no. So my mother know I used to do it from time to time, but I don't really do it like that. Like, I, she think I quit, but I only do it from time to time. So I said, okay, so this is from time to time, right? So this was your time, and now you ain't gonna do it no more for three months? That's what you say it? She like, yeah, yeah, something like that, something like that. I should have knew this bitch was lying. In my head, y'all, I wanted to get the fuck away from her. I did not trust this bitch. I was like, you know what? You know what? I don't trust this hoe. I don't like her. I don't like the way she act when she on it. I don't like how strong she get. I don't like this shit. Mind you, Valentine, she got the great energy. She just, hey, I said, no wonder why you always got great energy. You so hype. You always happy as fuck. You just cherry. You, hey, what y'all want to do? Like, no wonder the fuck why. Because you've been sniffing this whole time to keep your stamina up. Now, at this point... We leave the bathroom, we go back out the bathroom, y'all. When I tell you, these bitches is so hyper. So hyper. They were doing more than twerking, bro. They was doing some other shit. Like, I don't, it looked like they was breaking their back. I don't know. And then it had, it was a twerk contest, y'all. When I tell you, Renee won the twerk contest, I didn't even participate. Because my mood was shot, bro. First of all, I just caught these bitches sniffing. Then I just got hemmed up against the wall like the hawk. Then this bitch eyes is mad big and she mad strong. I was just over it, y'all. But I didn't know nobody else South Carolina besides my family. And I wasn't going to go to my family like, hey, I got a cocaine living with me. I wasn't going to do all that. So I was just like, charisma, just chill out. Bro, Renee won the twerk contest. All the bitches was mad. Renee was over here trying to fight all the bitches. When I tell you this drug made her somebody she was not, or maybe this was her, but I don't really know her. So I was just like, I can't, I can't do this shit. I can't do this shit. So, after that, we have a home. And while we driving home, mind you, Valentine is behind us in her car. Valentine is coming back to my, um, our house. So, at this time, we have a home or whatever. And I'm trying to tell Renee, I'm like, well, I don't think that you should continue to do the drug anymore. Because I don't like how strong you got, bitch. I don't like how you act. I don't like how none of that shit. So she basically was telling me how, oh, she's not going to do it no more. It was just a time to time thing. She, that's not what she do. And, you know, Valentine, she just hyped. So at the time, Dreads, which is Renee Boo, he come over to the house or whatever, y'all. So they chilling in the room. So now at this point, they close the door. I say, yeah, they about to start doing this extra shit. And that's another thing, y'all. When Renee would take this drug, y'all, she would get so horny. Like, she will be wanting to fuck. 
okay? You know how many times she came on to me and tried to sleep with me? And I said, hell to the no, no, no. Hell to the no, no, no. Baby, you high. I'm sober. I'm, nah, I'm good. Uh-uh, you that strong choking me up, you might be strong nibbling on her. Mm -mm. Nah, baby, we can't do that. So I would always turn her down and she would just call Dredd and Dredd would come over there, y'all. So they did that. So now at this time, like I said, she closes the door. Me and Valentine, see, I text Renee phone and I tell Renee, like, I'm finna go with Valentine around the corner to her people's crib and chill out with them or whatever. So after I say that shit, y'all, when I tell you Renee was a jealous ass friend, she did not want me to hang out with nobody else if it wasn't her. But how am I supposed to hang out with you when you coked up and you're in the room giving it to um dress? So yeah, I'm going with Valentine here. I know I don't do coke. I know you nobody got to worry about that. So y'all, when I tell you Renee ran out the room so fast, it's like we heard her phone ding and then the door was open and Renee was running to the front door because we was going out the front door. So Renee runs up to the front door. I swear to God, y'all, when I tell you, she grabbed Valentine like this, y'all. She grabbed her by the neck and she was pushing her up against my porch. And she was like, if you and your friends do any fucking thing to call your bitch, I'm gonna kill you. Don't you ever do anything to her. That's my friend. That's my dog. Then my lord is here with her like shit. Yes. She was going in. Valentine was so fucking scared because Valentine was like, What are you talking about? I'm not gonna do nothing. She's like, If you have her over there trying to sniff coke, y'all trying to do something, her, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna find out where y'all sniff in the location right now. And I'm just like, Bro, what are you doing? Like, I'm trying to move Renee. I'm like, Bro, you doing a little bit too much, bro. Calm it down, Renee. Like, what are you, why are you choking this girl? Like, Mind you, I just got choked up a few hours ago. I wasn't trying to take the choking for her, but shit. So Valentine just telling her, bro, I'm not doing nothing. I'm not going to make her do anything. Like, what are you talking about? Like, she gets off of her and she tells her, I'm not letting y'all leave until you send me the location. Because mind you, I was getting in the car with Valentine and she was driving. But we was only going literally right around the corner. Up one block and around the other. We wasn't going far. But Renee, why the fuck do I got to check in with you? I'm grown as hell. If I feel like I want to go with Valentine, I want to go with Valentine. Like, I just don't want to be around you because you just turned me off. Like, what are you doing? I don't want to be up here hearing you moan all night. Like, I don't want to hear that. Like, I'd rather go over here and party, get some shit off my mind because I'm just over this shit. Valentine texts her the address or whatever. We hit goals over to Valentine friend house bro everybody in Valentine friend house was cocaine y'all like what I tell you I went in the house it was a pool table it was people playing the game it was food out and everything I told Valentine I don't want to eat this food we could just go to McDonald's or something because I'm not eating this shit I don't know what they put it in but yeah I'm not finna eat that y'all so Valentine was telling me girl it's cool I'm we gonna go get something to eat or whatever so we go get something to eat we come back, bro. When I tell you everybody went to the pool table and started sniffing coke. Take it outside. Everybody, I'm just eating. I'm just like. So the dude, one of the dudes, I guess he liked me and he kept trying to talk to me. But I'm telling him like, no, 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 no. She's off limits. Don't say nothing to her. Just leave her alone. She don't do what we do. Don't try to force her. She's not smoking no blunt tears. She's not doing nothing that we doing. So don't try to do nothing. A friend, Renee. That bitch is crazy, like, she's crazy as fuck. I have to bring her back in one piece or she's gonna do something to me. So don't- So like, Valentine is telling them she off limits, she don't do what we do, bro. Don't try to get her to sniff, don't try to peer pressure her. She's good. So at this point, y'all, when I tell you Renee is blowing up Valentine's phone, bro, she's blowing up her phone. Like, every five minutes, Valentine is like, hello, hello, yes, Renee, yes, no, she's safe, she's right here. Oh, my God, Charisma here, talk to her, like, and I'm just like, Renee, why you keep calling? She's like, nah, fuck that, cause I don't trust that bitch. None of that, like, she's talking mad hard over the phone, like, fuck that, cause I don't trust that bitch, none of you over there. I said, but you sound like you moving like a cocaine. Like, it sound like you out oh, like fucking that. Like, what are you talking about, sis? I'm good. I'm grown. If I don't want to do nothing, I'm not going to do it. Nobody's going to peer pressure me into doing nothing, bitch. If anything, I know how to walk back around the corner to my house. Like, it's not that serious. Calm down. 
So she just like, yeah, y'all be good. Anything call me, cause I'm not that bitch at all. You know, and I'm like, bro, she's good. She, she's straight. Like she's a lawyer. She's really holding it down, bro. She's not letting nobody do nothing to me, y'all. Like she, she's straight. Feel me? So Renee, she over there, and she just like still calling the phone and shit. So. That is, that eventually ends. Yeah, so now at this point, I'm pretty drunk, y'all. I'm like, yeah, girl, I'm ready to go back to the house. Let's go back to the house. So Valentine, she comes with me to the house or whatever, and she's basically like, I'm going to spend the night with y'all or whatever because it's late. So when she lives, she lives on the other side of town, and I guess it was too late or she was too drunk because she wanted to spend the night. So Renee was already in the room with Dred, so she couldn't sleep with her. Mind you, we only had two blow up beds. So, Valentine told me she said she was going to sleep in my room with me. I really did not want Valentine to sleep with me because she was already on some gay shit already. She wanted me, y'all. And I did not look at her like that. I really looked at her as a friend. So, she's laying with me. Mind you, I tell her, can you go up? Can you get up and go in the shower? Because we've been outside all day. Hold on. Valentine, I tell Valentine, I said, girl... Can you go get in the shower? Because I already took a shower. It's not like I'm trying to be nasty or nothing. I'm just trying to say we done been to the club. We done been all types of places. I don't want them outside clothes on my little blow bag. You know what I'm saying? I don't want them outside clothes on my blow bag. So you can take a shower. I gave her some full pajamas, hair, shirt, and pants. Boom. You can do what you need to do. But you need to take your ass up in the shower. So now she's in the shower or whatever. Renee goes in the bathroom because she needs to pee. Right? So Renee goes in the bathroom, she comes out the bathroom or whatever. So at this point, Renee comes to me. She comes in the room. Mind you, her little boo thing, um, what's his name? Her little boo thing dress, he had left. He always left in the wee hours in the morning, like five in the morning. So her little boo thing left. Renee comes to me. She's like, yo, I just went in the bathroom to pee. And yo, I pussy stayed. Like, that was how I pussy stayed. I'm like, girl, that's what I was trying to take you in the club when she was twerking. Like, her shit really stank. Like, I don't know if she got some type of, like, I don't know how to tell a girl in a nice way your pussy stink. Like, it's just, you can't say it nice. Like, I don't know how to say it, so I don't want to say it. So my, I just told her to get in the shower. Like, that's all I said. So she like, yeah, when I went in there, she tried to make me get in the shower with her. Oh, somebody. I'm like, what you mean trying to make me get in the shower with her? She like, yeah. She kept telling me, like, oh, get in the shower with me, get in the shower with me. Because Charisma don't want to, she ain't going to want to, but I asked her. And I was like, what? Ew, like, turn off, like, I'm disgusting. So that happened or whatever. Like I said, Valentine, she gets out the shower, whatever. She gets dressed, she comes lays in my room, I guess. I wasn't trying to fuck her and she didn't like that. So when I woke up early in the morning, the girl was gone. And I didn't even wake up early in the morning. I woke up like 12 o'clock because it was 5 a.m. at that point. So I woke up like 12 o'clock p.m. And the girl was gone at that point. So Renee's up. She's singing, cooking in the kitchen. That bitch loves to cook on the grill. The 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 George Foreman grill that's in the kitchen, she loves to cook on the grill. And she loves to sing her little church songs early in the morning. So she's singing her church songs early in the morning. And I'm just like, girl, what the hell happened last night? Like, now that you sober, let's really talk about it. So she was like, oh, please don't bring nothing up from last night. I don't really remember, but all I know is just, I just don't want you to tell my mother what you see me doing because that's not the type of female I am. Why the fuck you lying? That's not who I want to be. That's not the person I'm trying to, you know, so please just don't say nothing to my mom. Like, I really would hate for you to do that because, you know, like, I'm trying to make it out here. I'm trying to find something out here for me and my child. Stop the cap. And I'm just in my head like, bitch, been here for three weeks. I didn't see you search for anything. Not a job. Don't you need pay stubs? Like... But I'm just in my head saying shit because I don't know this bitch. So, I, I, you know, like, I'm getting to know her as time go on. And already I don't like this bitch. But like I said, it's bad luck when you throw somebody out your house. And I've seen it happen too many times when I try to do it to people and karma bit me in the ass. So, I, I just let people leave, y'all. I do not throw them out. You know what I'm saying? So, at this point, it's getting to about 2 o'clock. I get a text message, and it's from Valentine, and she's basically asking me. She's saying, hey, I'm about to move out of my house, and I'm about to move back into my parents' home. So, can y'all please come help me pack up the house, please, and thank you. That's basically what she asked me. So, I tell Renee, and I'm like, hey, this girl, she wants us to help her pack her house. She's about to move out. This and the third. As us being her friend, do, do you want to do it? Like, I didn't tell her yes or no yet. So Renee goes, well, tell that bitch she need to pay us and we gonna do anything. 
So you're doing this because she's rich? Like, I'm, I'm confused. You're doing this because she's rich? Okay, whatever. So anyway, I don't tell the girl shit. I don't say anything. I guess when they text the girl, she tell her, if we gonna have to pack up your house, if we gonna have to do this, you gonna have to pay us. Like, so the girl said, oh, no problem. I don't mind paying y'all. It's no problem. I swear. I just need help. You know, like that. So we like, okay, cool. So finally, we go over there or whatever. And when I tell y'all, it was literally no packing going on, y'all. No packing going on. First of all, the girl had like a leak in her bathroom that it was water everywhere. So it was hard for us to even use the bathroom. Toilet didn't even flush. I say, good thing no, none of us got our periods. Like, what the hell? Kitchen was looking crazy. Like, it was stuff halfway packed everywhere. So we sitting there. We like, okay. I'm asking her. I'm like, okay, so where do you want this kitchen stuff to go? Can you give me a box? She like, oh, no, we'll just do that later. Do what later, bitch? Valentine, you asked us to come over here to pack for you, bitch. That's what the fuck you asked us to do. So that's what we finna do. So she's like, oh, so, um, well, you can just put, you know what? Just leave that. I'll do that part. So I'm like, okay, well, the living room. Do you want me to pack this stuff in this box that's labeled or do you not? Oh, well, we'll just wait till later. So I'm like, wait till later for what? So at this point, I start getting aggravated, y'all. I sit on her couch and I pull out my phone and I'm just scrolling, y'all. I'm on Facebook. I'm on everything. I'm texting my friend that live out here and I'm telling her, bitch, these bitches is weird as fuck. Like, mind you, my friend could not see her ass. And this was the, you know, I did that story time with the, um, where I feel like it was a lot of colorism going on because I told the girl that Renee was talking to her man on Plenty of Fish. And the girl told me, oh, my man don't even like dark skins. Yeah, her. So I'm texting the girl. And I'm just like, oh, these bitches blowing my eyes. I don't know what the fuck these bitches are talking about. I'm like, I don't even know what these bitches are talking about because these bitches are stupid as fuck. Like, I'm ready to go. And I don't know what she's talking about. She want to pack. She ain't pack shit. She ain't pay shit. She ain't do. I'm just trying to pack, get paid, and go home. I'm not trying to do nothing else bad enough. We ain't got no jobs anyway. Like, this is some good side money that we could be making. So I'm steady just scrolling mad as fuck. So as I'm scrolling, I notice like 15 minutes go by. I don't hear Renee or the friend. So I go in her room because I'm like, okay, so they went in her room. I go in her room, y'all. Why is they sniffing again off the fucking dresser? That's weird. So now at this point, I'm getting mad. I start yelling. Like I literally raise my voice. I'm like, I don't give a fuck who house this is. Bitch, you told us to come motherfucking pack so we can get paid, so we can go. I'm not about to be in here. All y'all bitches want to do is sniff coke all day. Like, who the fuck? Should... I'm going in, y'all. I'm going in because I'm mad. This is what you really wanted to do, bro. You could have did this shit on your own time. You could have picked her up and y'all could have came over here and did this on your own time. So now at this time, bro, they is laughing at me. Like, obviously, they high. So, they laughing at me. I'm annoyed. I grab my car key. I said, bitch, find a way to get home. That's what I say to Renee. Find your ass a way to get the fuck home, bitch. So, I get to my car and I speed off. Mad as hell. So, I go to the house. Mind you, I told you I'm scared to stay home by myself. But I did it. That's how mad I was. I stayed home by myself. Put me on a little Netflix movie on my phone. And I was up on the blow-up bed. Like, you know, I got the high blow-up bed. You know what I'm saying? So, I was up on... These cokehead bitches. Fuck these bitches. I'm not fit to do this. So that happens or whatever. So later on that night, Renee comes home. The girl. This is the funny part. So the girl, she comes over, right? And she, her friend is driving. She has another friend that I don't even know about. Her friend, Valentine's friend, is driving the car. Renee is in the back seat. So they pulls up on the yard and I'm trying to figure out who fucking car this is. So I run out on the yard and I cut on my porch light because I want to know who this is. At the time, I had just got my grass cut and I noticed the girl is driving all on my grass. I have a whole driveway right here. Why are you driving all on my grass? So Renee gets out the car or whatever. You can tell they drunk. Renee gets out the car. Valentine, she's waving from the window. And the girl, she just was on my grass. So I said, excuse me. You see a driveway right here, you pull into the driveway, that's what it's made for. You don't you don't roll on nobody's grass after they grass just got cut. So the bitch in the car, we ain't even gonna give her a name. The bitch in the car talking about some. <laughs> Are you talking about this little grass? <laughs> bitch, little where? Ain't nothing little around you, bitch. Everything big. Like what are you talking about? Little where? What are you talking about? 
So when she say that, Renee and the girl start laughing. So I'm telling Valentine, I walk to the car, to the passenger side, where Valentine is at. And I'm like, Valentine, I don't know who your friend is, but you better get this bitch. I told her to get the fuck off my grass. Like, and she's talking about little grass. She just kept saying, <laughs> little grass. But listen, you and your fucking friend, y'all rich, okay? So y'all don't have the little grass problem. You think it's a little bit of grass. I don't give a fuck, bro. When that shit grow, that shit is tall. And I got that shit cut down. And I want you to respect my fucking grass. And that's just it. I don't want your tired print in my grass. Because it rained the night before. So the grass was still wet. So the tired print was making the dark mud marks. If y'all know what I'm talking about, y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't care if I'm just renting. I want my grass to look good. The fuck? So, the friend keeps talking about, oh, you're a little grass, you're a little grass, you stressing over your little grass. Bitch, I'll punch you through this motherfucking car. So, I go, runs over to the driver's side, and I'm trying to punch the bitch, and the bitch rolls up her window laughing. So, I'm like, you know what? Go on about your day. Go on about your day. Go on about your day. I said, Valentine, you can never say nothing to fuck to me. You can never come back to my house. Don't ask me shit, bitch. We not friends, you fucking cokehead ass bitch, okay? We done. So I ended me and Valentine friendship. I was and I told her about myself, bitch, you're a pussy fucking stank. That's why I didn't want to fuck you in the first place. I don't give a fuck how rich you are, bitch. You not my cup of tea ho. Like, I don't care about nothing. When I tell you I was going so in, I was going in. Cause bitch, you talking about my little grass when I just say get the fuck off my grass. Yeah, bitch, you got no respect. You see them little rich bitches? Bro, this this is why. Listen. The little rich bitches, they come to your house and they talk about your little grass, oh, your little porch, oh, your little this. No, bitch. No, bitch. And this is big. This is big compared to where the fuck I came from. So don't try to play me and downplay my little ass grass. I ain't never had grass before. I'm proud of this fucking grass, bitch. So, yeah, she drove off. She skirted off and left the fucking tire prints in my grass, y'all. It was like mud marks in my fucking grass. So, yes, I was mad. So, mind you, Renee's in the fucking house, all pissy drunk and shit. And I'm sitting here telling her, like, your fucking friends is disrespectful. Them bitches can't come to my crib. I don't give a fuck about none of that. So, Renee goes, oh, oh what you jealous for? What you mad? What you jealous for? Why are you jealous? Because I hang out with her? I said, I don't give a fuck who you hang out with. We both was hanging out with her. We both was hanging out with her. I'm choosing not to hang out with her because she lied just to get us to her crib so she can sniff with you. When y'all could have did that with your own time, I don't have time for none of that shit. She said she wanted help packing. I went to help her pack and she did no pack. All she did was sniff. I'm not on that shit. And I already told y'all bitches, when y'all want to do that shit, do that shit by yourself. Don't do that shit around me, bro, because I'm not with that shit. Y'all bitches get strong and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not with it. So when they like, oh, you just jealous because that's my friend. I said, now that's your friend. Bro, you didn't even fucking like her. Like, you was talking mad shit about her before you found out she was rich, bro. You hated her because she came up to me in the bar first. Like, you is a fake-ass bitch. Like, so at this point, me and Renee falling out, we going back and forth, back and forth. So now she tried to snatch my car keys to go see a nigga. So I snatched my car key back. I'm like, bitch, you're not using my fucking car. Do you have gas money? You don't never got no gas money. You ain't never got shit, bitch. So she's like, oh, bitch, you don't never got shit. I got a hundred dollars. This nigga just sent me a hundred dollars earlier. What the fuck you got? Uh, let's get ready to rumble. Bitch, 600. The nigga just sent me 300 last week, my allowance. Then he sent me another 300 this week. I got 600. And I didn't have to spend no money because Valentine was always offering and spending shit. So, yeah, I had 600 but you trying to act funny with your little $100, bitch? So, at this point, y'all did not want her to stay in the house with me. I threw the bitch the car key. I said, and you better fill up my motherfucking tent, bitch. And she went outside and I slammed the door and I locked that bitch. Yeah, I let her get my car. Yes. Yes. Yes, I was a dumb bitch, but I didn't care. I wanted the bitch away from me because she was still capping. I was never no jealous. I was never no mad. I was never none of that. I was very frustrated because that bitch Valentine lied just because she wanted to sniff. When she could have said, yo, Renee, I'm going to come pick you up by yourself and we go sniff. I never said y'all couldn't hang out without me. I'm not that friend. I'm not that bitch. I'm really, really getting to know both of y'all. I'm not that bitch. So... 
she leaves or whatever, she spends the night out, she comes back the very next day. Everything is called you, I'm not even saying nothing about the night before, I'm not saying shit. She keep bringing it up and I'm telling her, listen, Valentine can't come back to my house, I don't give a fuck what you talking about. That's your friend, you go see her over there, you go sniff over there, don't bring her or none of her rude ass, rich ass bitches to my crib talking about little ass grass. No, because I didn't forget about none of that shit. So Renee was just telling me, okay, she'll keep her away. So at this point, I guess Renee low hundred dollars she just was come um saying about the night before was gone. At this point, she's on the phone, she's calling dreads, and she got the phone on speaker. We in the kitchen. That was our favorite spot to sit in. I used to love sitting on the deep freezer while she cooked. She's on the phone. I'm sitting there and I'm listening to her talk to black or whatever. And no, not black. Um What's his name? Damn, that was his real name. I'm sitting here <laughs> listening to her talk to Dreads, right? So she's talking to Dreads and she's basically asking Dreads, can you pay her phone bill for this month? This, that, and the third. She basically telling him it's going to be $150. She got AT&T. She need her phone bill paid. This, that, and the third. So Black told her he was going to pay it. He said, give him a couple hours and call him and he's going to pay it. So after a couple hours went past, she kept blowing up Black's phone. I keep saying his real name, so we just gonna keep it like that. The, I never seen a nigga since then, so it's a lot of blacks. They don't know who I'm talking about. So she just kept blowing up black's phone, and he was not answering his phone, y'all. He was not answering the phone. So finally, he texted. He was like, "Oh, I'm with my baby mother. Stop calling the phone. When I call, when I call you, you just pick up whatever. But stop calling the phone." He said, "Don't worry, I'm gonna bring you the money later." And he never bought her money, y'all. So Renee was so fucking mad, y'all. She was so mad. Like, when I tell you slamming doors, she was pissed off, y'all. So we used to watch the 100, right? And we used to watch it on her phone, on her Netflix. Because when I try to go on my Netflix and watch it, she would get mad. Like, oh, I put you on the show. We need to watch it together. Da, da, da. So we used to watch that show. So when she was mad, I took the phone and I was watching the 100 or whatever. And she got mad and the bitch logged me out. Like the bitch logged me out. So I was like, okay, all right. Maddie two shoes is mad as fuck. Okay, whatever. So at this point, y'all remember I told y'all we used to work at the same job. So Renee gets back on plenty of fish and she starts talking to more dudes, y'all. So it was these other dudes that used to work at the job with us that I been friend zone, bro. I have been telling them, no, I don't want to fuck with y'all. Like, nah, I'm not with none of that. I already had friends on them. So one day she gets in the car. She tells me, come with her. We're going to go to a cookout. These boys having a cookout. So I'm like, you're having a cookout? We didn't have a cookout. She's like, yeah. I ate my order food. I just finessed their ass. I met this boy on Plenty of Fish. But we used to work with him. You know who he is. You got the two friends. And they all roommates at that complex. And I'm like, no. Show me a picture, son. So she showed me the picture. I'm like, bitch, I know you fucking lying. I know you talk to this one. This is the one who was trying to talk to me, and I had friends on him. You talk to him, so she like come in. We just gonna go like they hitting us all the liquor, all the stuff. We going over there. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. It's boring. Ain't nothing to do. Kids going. We ain't got no job. So fuck it. We finna go over there. They got a pool over there. Family. We bought our bathing suits. We was wet. So we goes over there. Whatever. We pulls up, and the boys are sitting on the trunk of the car. So I turned and I see one of the boys and I labeled him as like a stalker because he would not stop trying to talk to me, bro. And he used to be like, oh, you from New York? I'm from Jersey. We, we get perked. And I, I won't never forget, he had a chip tooth and I was just like, boy, I do not want you. I do not want you. So when we pulled up there, I could not believe she pulled up to these niggas that these niggas she was talking about. So I'm sitting here, I'm in the car with an attitude, y'all. I'm in the passenger seat like this. So she gets out the car, of course she leaves it running. I get out the passenger seat, I walk over to the driver's seat. So now I'm finna drive off, skirt off on her ass because I'm just like, bro, she always, she got a, the wrong choice of niggas, bro. Wrong choice of niggas. So I'm just sitting here with an attitude, I'm just shaking my leg. I'm just like, bro. I'm just so over this bitch. Like, I, I'm sick of her. I'm so fucking sick of her. So she comes over there. She's like, oh, what are you doing? So now the boys are starting to come over there. I'm like, bro, why the fuck would you bring us here? Like, come on, these bum ass niggas. Like, blah, 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 blah. I'm going in, right? So the boys like, oh, calm down. What you acting like that? You want to be bougie so bad. Just stand in the third. We just chilling. Nobody told you you had to talk to nobody. I said, bro, y'all all three of us try to talk to me and I already turned y'all down. 
So I know if she was coming over here and it's three of y'all, she had to tell y'all homegirl was going to talk to money. I'm not talking to none of y'all, bro. I'm not finna talk to none of y'all. So they like, okay, calm down. We just having a cookout. Feel me? Mind you, I see no grill. So I'm like, where the cookout at? I see the pool, but I see no grill. So I'm like, so where the cookout at? I don't see, I don't smell nothing. So they like, oh, we bought the food or whatever. We gonna cook inside the house. I'm like, now nah, y'all want us to go inside your house. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's just feeling like a setup to me, y'all. When I tell you these three boys, they became very great friends. Till this day, they became very great friends. I literally judged them without even knowing them. And that's fucked up because I hate when people do that to me. But I didn't know what Renee was on. So that's why I was like kind of iffy. But they was actually really great friends. So the two boys, I friend zoned them again. Listen, before I go in this house, I just need to let y'all know I'm not fucking with y'all. I'm not doing that with y'all. We ain't doing none of that. Feel me? The boy that um, Renee was talking to, she decided, oh, this going to be my boyfriend. Feel me? This going to be my boyfriend. So I'm just like, okay, well, I guess that's going to be a boyfriend or whatever. So that happened or whatever. I guess um, Renee tried to do a little, <laughs> Renee tried to get some heinous for the boy. And Renee was so mad. She came to me. She was telling me how his thing was so small and like he was so little and she just going to use it for his money. But really, them niggas never even had money because they had quit their job at the same plant we was working at. So we all was all broke as fuck so nobody really had money feel me i was stashing my little money in the side dipping in it every now and again but nobody really had money so i'm seeing it it's like wow this is crazy so at this point the boy with the chip tooth like me and him we getting more like see i'm friends with all of them but me and the boy with the chip tooth the one from jersey he talking to me or whatever and he he wasn't an ugly dude he just had a chip tooth it's not wrong with chip tooth but when you eat i don't need you cutting me yeah so um we just talking or whatever we feel me like oh well where you from well where you grew up at well who well how did you make it here you know we just getting to know each other as the days go on we be hanging out with these boys like every day y'all this was like our best friends renee swore this other this nigga was her boyfriend mind you the renee boyfriend we gonna call him light skin so light skin had a car he was the only one out of the friend group that had a car and i was the only one out of our friend group that had a car so anytime it was time to link she always needed me or he always you know what i'm saying so i was just like okay so now at this point we driving back and forth to each other's house we have the cookouts we, we have it um i'm cooking baked macaroni and cheese we going to the clubs together we going everywhere together like to me, these people, these niggas was really our best friends. I get along way better with boys than girls. And to Renee, this was her nigga that really wasn't her nigga. And she would get mad when she would ask him to do stuff for her. And he would be like, oh, I don't have it. Like, nigga, he's going to plasma. He's donating plasma, bro, to get gas. How the fuck do you think, like, she used to kill me, y'all. So as she see me and Chip Tooth getting, that's what I'm calling, man. She see me and Chip Tooth getting a little closer Renee starts getting mad. Like, she's like, oh, you want to fuck with him? I'm like, no, like, I'm just cool with him. Oh, but you act like you want to fuck with him, though. Bitch, I'm grown as fuck. You're not my girl. Stop telling me what the fuck I can and cannot do. So me and her used to get into it in front of them. And they used to be like, bro, y'all friends. Y'all need to calm down. And I used to be like, that bitch ain't my friend. She get the fuck out of my house. I, 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 I used to be so tired of Renee, y'all. But like I said, it's a whole lot more to the story. And this story is already an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm going to end this right here. And I'm going to definitely do a part three for y'all to fill y'all in and let y'all know the ending result. Because it came to when we was about to get it. It came to when a whole bunch of shit happened, y'all. So yeah. If y'all like this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you follow all my social medias. And up until then, deuces.